video requests about what I would do differently when it comes to personal finances if I had to do it all over again from the age of 18. That right there was a fantastic question and I actually thought about that for an entire week. I'm like, man, what would I do differently? Because, you know, a lot of things did go in the right direction, but a lot of things could have been adjusted and I could be even further along because of it. So we're going to dive right into exactly what I would do different if I started back from the age of 18. Let's get into it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So what would I do differently with my personal finances if I were to start back from the age of 18? Well, just to preface you, uh, when I was 18, I was definitely a freshman in college and money was like the last thing on my mind. So, and college went extremely well for me, so I wouldn't really change too much of what happened throughout my college career, but I will say this. Throughout my college career, I could have been saving literally for a four year period for an after college fund. And that's what I would recommend anyone in school or you know anyone who hasn't quite moved out of their parents' house yet, I would start a fund for after you move out. So you know, in your case, it might be a fund for after you move out of your parents' house. For me, it, it would have been a fund of after I graduate from college. And it would have just been a savings account. And I'm not sure how much I would have been able to save because it's not like I was really balling out of control when I was in college. But I did do some work when I was in college and I could have put away some savings for after college. So I would definitely change that. And another thing I would have done was like, I had a lot of downtime in college. I would have definitely looked up more about, you know, salaries, how much money I should expect to make outside of college, what wage was actually a good wage. And I did do some of that, but I didn't really do it as much as I should have. And I really didn't even know what the cost of living was. So like, just because you make a good wage, if you move like, you know, technically 55K is a good wage, right? But if you move to New York, you're gonna be sadly mistaken. Ain't no good wage over there, you know what I'm saying? So I would have went beyond what a good salary was and I would have been like, okay, well, for this area, what is a good salary? In this area, what could I expect to pay in rent? How much can I expect to pay for food, for groceries, for gas, for things like that, like down to the penny, because really you're not financially prepared right out of college, like more than 90% of the time. If you don't focus or even study a little bit about money, a little bit over the course of that four years, you're not really gonna have that much experience with budgeting or with saving or what an emergency fund is or how much should even be in your emergency fund. You're not gonna have that much of a concept of what it's like to pay off debt. And you're definitely not gonna know how to make your money grow and work for you. So I would have just studied a little bit, just little by little, like watch a YouTube video here and there. Like I didn't do any of that. I didn't start really getting serious about my finances until after I graduated and started earning my salary. And that's what I do differently. And also the reason I actually entered the field that I'm in right now, for those of y'all who don't know, I have a degree in industrial engineering technology and I fully plan on practicing only as an engineer, but I'm actually in the management field and I oversee a high level, very technological process. And that is what I do for a living. There's multiple hundreds of people that I'm responsible for. And the way that I was introduced into that field was by an internship. And I only did that one internship and I had my mind made up of what I wanted to do after college and that, and that was that. And what I would have done differently is I would have done at least two or three different internships just so I could get that exposure across what I could really expect. And I said that because that was like the free trial of what the experience was like. But once I actually got out on my own and moved out and everything and started like actually working there because I did end up working at the same place I did my internship at, it was the real thing and I wanted my money back. That was what it felt like basically. So it's a lot different when you're in internship, like the treatment, the butterflies and rainbows effect, like they're gonna make it look a lot more peachy when you're in an internship than when you actually start full time. Then it gets real, that's what it felt like. And I actually ended up hating it very shortly after I started working there uh, full time. So I'm talking like literally three months later, I knew that wasn't, that wasn't for me. I knew I couldn't stand it and I wanted out right then. So. That is something I would have done differently and maybe nothing would have changed because of it, but at least I would have had different exposure and I would have had a little bit more wisdom going into that. And with that said, knowing that I'm in the management field now, which I absolutely enjoy doing, I probably would have read a few more books about my career and I would recommend that for anyone. Like if you're, whatever career you're going into, it doesn't matter if it's nursing, engineering, leadership, management, law, like whatever field you're going into, I recommend you just 
read books like from people who are highly successful at just read books and see what their insight is you can learn a lot of valuable lessons and yeah you won't have the application yet but at least you'll have like an idea of how things should go and that'll take you a lot further than you would be than if you started without that type of information so i know i would be a ton further along if i would have read just a few books on the basic ideologies of management you know what i mean and reading to me at that point i was kind of immature in that i didn't think reading was like a cool thing I thought reading was lame like who reads like uh you know even though I was like highly diligent in college as far as reading for my own education outside of school and reading for my own enjoyment I just thought that that was lame and that it was not like the cool thing or the fun thing to do and I had some growing up to do in that department but now that I'm a lot more mature and I actually read quite often I think that right there would have taken me to a completely different level another thing I would do differently I spent a lot of money on dates I'm talking about like between the ages of 19 till now, literally till now, I've spent a lot of money on dates and that's normal, right? Like when you're younger, you're going to go out on dates, you're going to meet people, right? And it's a completely normal thing to do, but you, you like a lot of the women that I've spent time with and have dated and all the things like that, like they were not worth my time. So I'm not going to say I wouldn't have went on all of those dates, but I am going to say I would have been more intentional about who I'm spending my time with because my time is valuable. And I could have spent that time doing something else, literally anything else. And I could have gotten a better return on my investment. I could have spent that time in the gym and I've spent quite a bit of time in the gym, but I could have spent even more time in the gym and get into an even better shape. I could have applied more of that time into the library. I could have applied that time into YouTube. I could have applied that time into making more money. Because the thing is, we think a lot of things are more important than they really are when we're younger. We think dating is so important and being with this girl and being with that girl and talking to this person and looking cool and things like that. A lot of things are not that important. And we place a different type of importance over that stuff when the stuff that's actually important is stuff like getting your money together, educating yourself, drinking your water, you know what I mean? Going to the gym. Like I would have done all of that so much more because it has a way bigger impact on my life. Going to parties and having fun. Yeah, that's fun. And they say that's what your young years are for. In my opinion, you can go to a few parties here and there, but I just don't have fun with parties. My thing is... When you work on yourself now, the impact later is substantial. And it's a different type of mindset. A lot of people won't agree with me when it comes to that stuff. But when you look at the results that I've had in my life, that's what I'm talking about. And anyone with results will tell you, like, they didn't they didn't screw around half the time. They didn't party all the time. They weren't so focused on fun and dating and all these other things, like, 100% of the time. It's not to say that they never did that stuff. It's to say that they were more focused on their purpose in life. They were more focused on their goals. They were more focused on the process of them becoming the best version of themselves. And the direct correlation of that is having more money, having more happiness. Being able to sit on a platform and give people legit sound advice. And like that's legit. What I, if I could go back, that's what I would do differently. I would have been more firm on what my standards were for certain people. And that's friends, that's dating, that's spending my time with people or talking to certain people. Like that right there, you want to be firm on your standards because your time is extremely, extremely valuable. And one other thing I would do differently, and this may not seem like it's finance related, but it definitely is. I would have spent more time with family because between college and between my professional career, I've lost a few family members and I will never be able to see them again. I'll never be able to hug them again. I'll never be able to talk to them again. And even this year, I lost a very close family member. My, my aunt passed away this year and it was an extremely devastating loss. Like this stuff is real. And that's something that I kind of just took for granted. It's like you just kind of expect these people to be alive forever. And of course, all these losses were unexpected. But that's the thing about life. Life is unpredictable. You don't know when the last time is going to be when you talk to your family member. You, you're not going to know when the last time is going to be that you actually text your family member and they respond. I would have spent more money on gas to go see them. I would have spent more money on flights to go see them. I would have talked to them on the phone more. I would have done more things to help them, whether it's cleaning out their garage or any manual labor you can think of that someone who's younger and more able-bodied can get done. Just anything like that. I would have done a lot more in that regard. So that money that you could be spending on dates, that money could be going to see your family. 
to see your close friends. I would put more time in the people that mean a lot more to me. That's what I would do differently as far as relationships go. Y'all know I can get deep on this channel. I'm getting deep today. And something else that I would actually do differently is something that I talked about in my last video. You can definitely check that out after this if you're interested. But I would have focused a lot more on being financially established, more so than being like financially free. Like being financially free is so far down the line and you're not gonna accumulate, like you might, but a lot of times you're not gonna accumulate like millions of dollars in like a two year period. It's much more beneficial to focus on becoming financially established and financially stable and then going for the financial freedom than going straight for financial freedom. And that right there is why I wrote my book, The Wealth Journey, which goes over all that, the entire process of building wealth, the entire process of becoming financially free, and what that actually looks like, building a career, actually getting good at job interviews, and making extra money, and making passive income, and learning how to invest. Stuff like that is extremely valuable, and that's why I wrote an entire book on it. It's one of my proudest accomplishments in my entire life. Anyway, if you want to check that book out, it's linked up here and in the description. And I'm not going to go through every single step that I would have focused on with being financially established. I definitely think it's better to just check out the video that I made last week. And it really breaks all that stuff down and it has a free guide that you can click on. But I definitely would have focused on that. I definitely would have focused heavily on saving and building an emergency fund. And I actually built those things up pretty quickly, but I just would have done them a little earlier. And another thing I would have focused on is actually learning about investing learning about good companies to put my money into, learning about what funds and what were secure investments and which investments were deemed as not secure, what high volatility meant in terms of investing and what safe investing meant. And, you know, instead of saying, I don't have the money to invest or, oh, it takes too long to, to see the outcome of investing, I would have just been like, time's going to go by anyway. So I might as well learn this now and put my money and part my money into a place that's going to allow it to grow exponentially over time. So what if it takes 5, 10, 20 years to grow? It's better than sitting in a bank account and not gaining anything. I would have told myself, don't you understand? Like, this is how the wealthiest people in the world have become wealthy. It wasn't just by saving everything they make at work. Nah. And if you look at modern day millionaires, a lot of them are heavily invested. So that's something I definitely would have done. And ever since I've come to that realization, I study the stock market a lot. I study companies a lot. It's just really like fascinating to me. Anything I can, I learn about investing because what it is, is it's, it's a money multiplier. That is exactly what it is. It takes your money and it multiplies it. But you have to have the education. You have to have the willpower. You have to have the emotional intelligence. And those things aren't that difficult to have. Those are not special talents. You can literally pick up a book right now and learn exponentially more than you've ever known about that stuff. And you can read it in a short amount of time. And if you don't really understand what you're reading, you can watch videos on it. And you can read an article that breaks it down in common language instead of listening and looking at all these weird terminologies and verbiage and all this stuff. You don't have to do all that. So I would have made it less scary to myself to invest. And I actually would have taken the time to take that advice seriously because someone long ago told me, just, just invest in companies. Like, you're making all this money now. Invest in companies. You'll be really good a few years from now. And I was like, man, nah, it takes too long. It takes a lot of money to make it grow. I was misinformed. And now I'm looking back on companies like Apple and Microsoft that are worth way more now than they were in 2017. All that, all that money on dating, all that money on having a good time with my friends, that could have went towards investing. That's what I'm talking about. If I would have just invested a few hundred dollars a month back then, by now, I'm not kidding, by now, I could have had over 50 grand in gains on top of what I'm investing in right now. And that's just with investing a few hundred dollars a month. I'm not going to go too deep into investing in this video, but I really, really, really like I really would have just stuck with like Apple, Microsoft and Google and, and things like that, like the really good companies. And I would have just stayed the course with them. That's whew, the reason I'm breathing all heavy is because I understand the amount of growth that would have came with that decision. But you live and you learn. And it's not like that was common knowledge at the time. And it was not it's not like people were coming to me telling me these things. These are things that I'm reflecting on now. So that's what I would do differently. And lastly, I would spend more time focusing on my mental health. Um, I spent a great deal of time reading books on like emotional intelligence when I was actually like getting into the reading habit. But um, I, I spent a great deal of time learning about emotional intelligence and like managing yourself and, and understanding other people and that stuff. But I'm talking about my own individualized mental health. I would have gotten into meditation a lot sooner. 
I would have gotten into self-reflection a lot sooner because these things right here are extremely valuable and they're free to do. So why not do those things? And, you know, I used to think of meditation as some like woo woo type of thing, but it's really not like it's literally you sitting in a room, you know, when it's quiet and calm and you just think about things that you want to improve and you think about your goals and, and you just it's that time that you have with yourself is extremely important and it's extremely valuable when it comes to your mental health. And that stuff is important and it might not seem monetary, but if you look at co the corporate world, if you look at anywhere where people work, people call off of work all the time because of mental health and people even go on leave a lot because of mental health issues like that is an actual real thing. So I would have done that a lot sooner. It actually, it keeps you calm and I've always been a calm guy, but it keeps you even more calm. It keeps you at bay and it gives you a bigger and better understanding of life and it makes you a more stable minded person which is what I like a lot about it because you always have your future in mind but you also have the present in mind too and when you're present in the moment it's very hard to get stressed out or have a overwhelming sense of anxiety about yourself like when you're in the present you're focused on the now you keep your future goals in mind but when you're focused on the now it makes life so much more enjoyable so those are the things that I learned and that's what I would do differently from A to Z. If I were to start over from the age of 18, those are the financial decisions that I would make differently if I were to start over from back then. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. This was an awesome topic and I really appreciate the recommendation. If you guys have more, I will be happy to make more videos based on your recommendations. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.